Welcome to the GIE author interview series. My name is Professor Ian Grelnick. I am from Rambam Medical Center in Haifa, Israel, and I am the senior associate editor for gastrointestinal endoscopy. I'm joined today by Dr. Bill Brugge. He is a professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School. He is also the director of endoscopy at Massachusetts General Hospital. And we're going to be discussing your paper today, Diagnosis of Pancreatic Neoplasia with EUS and FNA, a report of accuracy. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you here today. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on your paper. Very, uh, very interesting paper. I have a few, uh, a few questions I want to sort of delve into here. First of all, can you, can you tell us all about just briefly a little bit about the study and how you conceived the study? And what, what led you to do this? Well, as you know, uh, one of the primary indications for endoscopic ultrasound is in the uh, detection and the diagnosis, actually cytologic diagnosis of pancreatic neoplasia. We had kept a prospective database for 10 years, and we had examined uh, over 700 patients with pancreatic lesions. That's an impressive number. And I wanted to try to determine how good we are at making the diagnosis and uh, using very strict criteria. This has been done in the past with single centers, small numbers, short periods of time, but this was really a 10-year study to try to determine how good are we at making a cytologic diagnosis. Okay, so t tell us a little bit how your methodology, where these patients came from and, and what the process you went, to, went through during the study. Yeah, so these, these are patients uh, very commonly known to many of us, so patients who present with a pancreatic mass on CAT scan or an ERCP, and we're asked to do an endoscopic ultrasound to try to determine if they have cancer or they don't have cancer. And we examine the pancreas, we f find a lesion, we perform fine needle aspiration, and then we examine the cytology, and then try to determine if it's uh, diagnostic or not. Okay, tell us a little bit about the results. What, what did you find in this study? So what we found is uh, we are looking at uh, two groups of patients, actually three groups of patients, those with neoplasia, adenocarcinoma, and neuroendocrine tumors, and then those patients without neoplasia. And we tried to determine how accurate we were in making this diagnosis. And if we use very strict criteria for cytology, meaning that they had to have an absolute irrefutable diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, our, our accuracy rate was about 79%. Uh, now this is, uh, you might say, maybe a little modest, but uh, this is the reality of uh, endoscopic ultrasound and fine needle aspiration. It actually got a little bit better over time because I think uh, our techniques and needles and cytology got better. Uh, the diagnosis, cytologic diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumors was a little bit lower, uh, but very similar kinds of numbers. Now, if you use different kind of criteria, if you say, well, if you accept suspicious as being diagnostic, mm -hmm. then the accuracy rate goes up to 85%. And if you use uh, atypical cells, then, of course, you also have a higher diagnostic rate. But, of course, specificity suffers. And when you have patients with a suspected neoplasm, of course, we want to have, most of us want to have 100% specificity. So I think the answer is that the accuracy rate is about 80% uh, for us making a diagnosis of pancreatic w Were cancer. you able to look at over that 10-year period, maybe within the first five years versus the second five years in terms of, like you talked about, there were better techniques, uh, different needles, uh, et cetera. Did you see an improvement over, over time, sort of a learning curve? We did. We okay. did see an improvement over time. It's um, difficult for us to determine exactly what Ha what was responsible for that improvement. Uh, I got better, uh, the cytologist got better, the instruments are better, the needles are better. Overall, the techniques have improved uh, quite dramatically. So I think at this point in time, at, in 2009, I think the accuracy rates are probably higher, maybe approaching 90%. Okay. Do, do you do these procedures with the cytologist actually in the room at the bedside? What, how is it done at MGH and, and what are your recommendations about that? Because I've heard others talk about mm -hmm. the importance mm -hmm. of that. Uh, it, that is probably the number one variable that has a, a great impact on the outcome. And if you have a cytologist in the room directing you for additional specimens, different needles, different techniques, this will definitely improve the, uh, the accuracy and the sensitivity for the uh, detection of malignancy. So this is very important. And of course, the cytologist can't be there at every examination. So we found that our accuracy rate was lower 
in those cases where we did not have a cytologist present. Are, are there current guidelines out there today that, that recommend this? In other words, in practice, out in community practice, is that the standard that is adhered to today? I think that this is probably a recommendation. I don't think it's a guideline. Uh, as you know, there are many practical aspects of, of this that make it uh, very difficult to do. Uh, we're um, fortunate enough in our room to have a mic microscope and a cytologist, and they work two floors below me, so it's very easy for them to come up with a cytotechnician. They examine the specimen and then make the diagnosis on, on, um, on site. But of course, in institutions where they're in another building, uh, it's, a, it's a long trip, uh, then there are practical aspects that make it very difficult. Okay. Uh, what are the main takeaway messages from your findings of this study? I, I think the, there are two very important messages here. Number one is that we are reasonably good at making this kind of diagnosis of pancreatic neoplasia. And I think uh, EOS FNA is probably the technique of choice for making a cytologic diagnosis of pancreatic malignancy. The second takeaway take message is that we can not only make a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, but of course of neuroendocrine lesions, which um, also are very important for patients. Dr. Brugge, thank you very much for uh, being here with me today. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, thank my primary uh, author, Brian Turner, who uh, was responsible for uh, the uh, major part of this investigation.